what is up everyone in today's video we are going to create realistic snow from scratch in photoshop so let's hop in the first thing you want to do is create a new layer so hit command shift n to bring up a new layer dialog box name that whatever you want then we're going to add a new fill layer by hitting shift delete make sure that is filled with white because mm, snow is white and that's what we want from there we're going to add noise so go filter add noise and set this bad boy to 60 percent gaussian and monochromatic from here what you're going to want to do is hit a levels adjustment layer by hitting command l you're going to set the black point to 70, the midpoint to 0.12, and leave the white point at 255. Basically, we just want to crunch that a little bit. From here, what we're going to want to do is go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and we're going to go into Sketch, and, yeah, Sketch, and we're going to go Torn Edges. But if I zoom in here, this is looking funky. This is no longer black and white. This is red on white, and that is not what we want. We do not want blood. We want snow, and it's because my color picker was set to red and white so hit our default colors there but flip them so make sure black is the background white is the foreground because we want white specks of snow on a black background go filter filter gallery once again hop in there to sketch torn edges and there you go that's looking a little bit more like snow but here are the parameters we want we want the image balance set to 30 smoothness at 13 and contrast at 20 hit ok to accept these and we're moving right along we are book in here so we're gonna set this blend mode now to screen because we don't want the black background we just want the white flaky flakes that are the snow from here we're gonna go filter blur Gaussian blur we want to add a 0.5 radius uh, blur on this just because of the snow we don't want it to have a harsh edge we want to blur those those edges just a little bit from here we're gonna hit command J to duplicate this layer and name it something appropriate for me snow 2 seems to work because <laughs> why not we're going to hit command T to bring up the transform dialog box and we're going to set this bad boy to 300% and hit OK. Next we're going to go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. I know that's counterintuitive because we just blurred this but by transforming it we've kind of blurred it more and we're going to bring a little bit of sharpness back to that image. So we're going to set the amount to 500, the radius to 0.9 and leave the threshold at zero. And we can see a little before and after here. It just tightens up the edges a little bit. We want a little bit sharper uh, than after we transformed it. Next up, we're going to go Filter, Distort, Wave. Make sure the type is set to triangle and the number of generators to 250, the wavelength minimum to 230, the maximum to 231, and the amplitude minimum to 1, and the maximum of 3. Make sure the undefined areas are set to repeat edge pixels and hit OK. Alright, you still with me? We're booking. We're booking here, but it's good. We're going to hit Command-J to duplicate the layer again. Name it something appropriate like Snow 3, for instance. And hit Command-T to bring up the Transform dialog box once again. And you guessed it, 300%. We're, we're just blowing these up. Just keep blowing them up. Anytime you have a transformation that goes off the artboard edges, or the, sorry, the canvas edges, you want to delete those pixels because they add up over time. So what we're doing here is hitting Command-A to highlight everything that's on the canvas. And we're going to go to Image, Crop. The reason why we're doing image crop here is because it gets rid of all those excess pixels and you're going to do that for all those layers. Once you're done with that, hit Command-J to duplicate this for a third time and name it Snow 4 because it makes sense. Hit Command-T to bring up the Transform dialog box and this time we're going to set this to negative 200 in the width and negative 200 in the height. We're just going to flip this and, uh, you know, yeah, why not? Next we're going to duplicate this for the final time, Command-J, once again, and name this Snow 5 because, well... It makes sense, but we don't need that. We're going to hide that for now and uh, activate Snow 4 by clicking on it. What we're going to want to do now is go Filter Blur, and we're going to add a lovely, lovely Lens Blur. You heard me right, Lens Blur. This is where the magic is going to happen because we're going to add some bokeh to this. Make sure it's set to the shape as hexagon. The radius is going to be set to 30. Our blade curvature is going to go all the way up to 100, and our rotation is going to be 150. Our specular highlights brightness is going to be 5 and a threshold of 255. For noise, you can do whatever you want here. You can have no noise. I added just a little bit of noise uh, and I set it to 2 and Gaussian and monochromatic. Once again, you don't have to have noise. I did it just for this layer and hit OK to accept that. Alrighty, next we are going to go Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And we're going to set the amount to 500 like it was before, but we're going to change the radius, radius to 6. Hit OK. Next, we're going to go Filter, Distort, Wave once again. And you know what? We don't have to touch anything here. But if you're feeling lucky and you want to jazz it up a bit, go ahead and hit that Randomize button. Two, three, four. Ha, go crazy on it and then hit OK. All right, we're done with Layer or Snow 4. We're going to click on Snow 5 <laughs> and go Filter, you guessed it, Blur, or maybe you didn't guess it, Lens Blur. 
This time, uh, we do have to change some of the parameters. We're going to make sure it's still set to hexagon as our shape. The radius is going to be 90. The blade curvature is going to be 90. Our rotation is going to be 50. Our specular highlight brightness is 100, and our threshold is 230. And this time, just knock out the noise. We don't want any noise. Set it to zero because we want it to be silky, silky smooth. Hit OK. And there you go. I mean, we're pretty much done. This is what the action would do. Well, we're going to shift click all of our layers uh, and group them in a group called snowflakes because <laughs> it makes sense and is very descriptive. And this is where the action that I've included below is going to end you. But we will not stop there. From here, it is just the beginning. You can see the before and after, and it doesn't seem like it does much to this image. But we can duplicate this layer and transform it and rotate it and do whatever we want. And we can do this as many times as we see fit. Because the idea here is you're going to build up atmosphere to your images, to whatever uh, fits your scene, essentially. So one thing I would suggest that you can do is you can convert that whole group to a smart object. When you do that, though, it's going to go back to a black and white. You're going to want to set the blend mode back to screen to knock out the black background color. And from here, you can just once again go to town, duplicate this, transform it, rotate it. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm going to make a few duplication uh, duplicate layers, transform them, and I'm just rotating it. I'm rotating it, and you'll see the atmosphere build up within this um, image. And there you go. Doesn't that look, oh, that looks so awesome, doesn't it? This just went to ASMR. Okay, I'm going to show you in a new image how the action actually works. So the thing with this action, or as far as I know, any action, well, the actions that I create, they need to be run on a background image. So the easiest way to do this is if you just drag an image into Photoshop, it should be the background image. But if you did what I did here, and I just copied and pasted an image into a document, you have this white background layer. Um, set to background as default. What you're going to want to do is double click that background layer and just give it any name because we just want to delete it. So delete it and then the only layer that is active is the image. You're going to want to go to layer new background from layer and you'll see why it's going to create the background layer from that image just like it said. So from here you can go into your actions, make sure it's already loaded and you can just play this action. It's going to do just what I showed you. It's going to save you that six minutes or whatever and it's going to create those five layers of snow grouped into a snowflake layer what you're going to want to do is just hit command a and go image crop to delete any excess pixels that are outside our canvas from here you can create a smart object and just duplicate the heck out of that once again the idea is to build up atmosphere the snow is all about atmosphere because it's going to be kind of foggy misty it's going to be made up of all those noise particles that we just created so you know Duplicate to your heart's content, rotate, transform, different opacities. At the end of the day, it's beautiful because you can group all of these layers together, all these smart objects or non-smart objects, and you can add layer mask. And the reason why I like adding layer mask is because if you're using this on people, you don't want to hide faces necessarily. Or in this image, for example, I want to draw more attention to that beautiful mountain in the background. So I'm going to just knock down some of this effect on the background. And there you go. But we don't stop there. Add a vibrance adjustment layer, and we can drop the saturation in the vibrance because on snowy days, it's not very vibrant out. It's very cold and kind of subdued. From there, add a hue and saturation, hit colorize. Uh, what I like to do is just drop the fill level down. So in this one, I dropped it to like 16. Grab a bluish color, pump up the saturation, and just like this, we've added so much atmosphere and emotion and a cool color tone to this image. You can completely change your images with this free action. And that is that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, give a like and a comment below. And be sure to check out that link below because that is going to contain the free Photoshop action. Uh, also at that link, there is a donate button. Do not feel obligated to do that. That just helps me and my family and this channel out. But guys, whew, this was a good one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed you. Let's do this again sometime, shall we? Bye-bye.